Hi everyone, I'm Kyler from The Content Mix, and I'm excited to be here with Carlos Beth, Chief Editor of the Doc Region for The Holiday Pirates, one of Europe's fastest growing travel search platforms. With headquarters in Berlin, Holiday Pirates has successfully launched services in 10 countries, including Germany, Austria, Switzerland, France, Italy, the Netherlands, Poland, Spain, the UK, and the United States. They also have services in seven different languages. Carlo is responsible for all content production for the Doc region, which includes Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. He also leads a team of passionate pirates, as they like to call themselves. So without much further ado, I want to welcome Carlo to the show, who's joining us today from Austria. Um, it's a pleasure to have you on the Content Mix. Hello, Carla. Good to meet you and good to talk to you today. It's nice to meet you. Actually, we were just talking before I'm connecting from the U.S. and he's in Austria. So, you know, the podcast is very international, <laughs> um, which is great. Um, and it's showing kind of the world of remote work that we were just talking about before we started the interview, the how flexible, you know, things are. Now, with the introduction, you know, I, that's based on my research and what I could get from you, but I would love to have you introduce yourself in your own words and just tell us, you know, a bit more about where you're from um, and what's your connection to content marketing in Europe. Yeah, originally I'm uh, from a, a village close to Frankfurt and uh, right now a Berlin resident, a startup scene and like for a while already living there, like and working for Holiday Pirates uh, since uh, nearly six years now, what you said. So like I'm kind of the dinosaurs already <laughs> in our company. So like uh, uh, we exist a bit lo longer already, 10 years now. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, not too many people uh, still there after six years. Um, the company like is uh, yeah focusing on good travel deals. So good uh, value for money, but human source so it means all product decisions like uh, mm -hmm. the uh, products we promote are um, recommendations by by real humans finally by all travel addicts and so we are a lot into content and uh, publications there uh, right now i'm leading a team of uh, 12 persons including me and uh, two um, students working students and mm -hmm. yeah uh, that's uh, what it is right now for sure like uh, uh, cool corona experience. changed yeah, many things yeah. uh, a lot in our industry but it's uh, interesting and challenging times and uh, holiday pirates is uh, yeah on track again after that's, uh, awesome. corona. that's good to hear and it's very encouraging because it's definitely you know something i love is travel and that was one impact you know that of the of the pandemic that i did not like <laughs> we weren't able to travel but it seems like things are getting back to normal and it's great for the industry as well but i wanted to know too like it, was your background always in marketing were you interested in marketing like you know when you decided to go into the world of work yeah, i'm coming from a completely different sector honestly so i studied uh, law in uh, <laughs> Mainz and uh, valencia so i was staying in spain for a while valencia and barcelona and um, yeah but always i was kind of interested in uh, marketing and content marketing social media marketing as well so uh, starting a little bit while I was traveling um, in uh, back in study times uh, in university uh, with a with a small block, really small block, not existing anymore for for friends and family and home and playing a bit with WordPress around and uh, that what it was while being in Southeast Asia, uh, Southeast Asia and Australia. And so I was always into the topic, but uh, yeah, doing something completely different before. Mm -hmm. And I would really answer. It was passion finally so it was the combination of being so interested in, in the product and travel and then like yeah having this kind of skill set and um, that's how i started at holiday pirates finally so i would really answer cool. passion so yeah um so the, so you, you were in spain and then when you finished your degree um did you go back to germany and then started looking for a job and ended up working at holiday pirates Correct. Like I was uh, at the beginning, I was applying for a job at the Spanish market because I wanted to stay in Spain. Spain. So first of all, I applied for that, but um, they didn't really um, have a look for somebody who uh, works in the Spanish market. So they offered me like, uh, aren't you interested in starting as a editor, as a um, content marketing manager? Uh, back then it was uh, a blogger. So um, six years ago, we still called this blogger in our company. And uh, that's how I started. And I really thought, okay, I need kind of a change like uh, uh, after 
um, yeah, law studies, and uh, I want to do something something else, and uh, that's uh, how I started in Berlin. That's really cool to see how like they gave you the opportunity, you know, to you know do something totally different, kind of follow your passion, and you're still there six years later. Um, so you started off as a blogger, but what other roles did you have um, at Holiday Pirates? Have you had during your time there? Yeah, I really started in, in content, so doing this product decisions mm -hmm. and like travel recommendations, so writing mainly. Mm -hmm. And back then it was still kind of separated, so it was then just writing and uh, normally not doing the social media posts. So um, just the product decision and then afterwards uh, like uh, publishing it on our blog. Um, yeah, and afterwards, like uh, I got more and more responsibility, so uh, mm -hmm. I um, became uh, a, a senior pretty quick so having already like uh, some uh, project leads and um, yeah then uh, in a really short time frame um, yeah getting already uh, getting already first uh, um, responsibility in leading a team so as a um, deputy chief editor and uh, yeah um, then like uh, I became a chief editor having the full responsibility and um, yeah uh, we changed a lot uh, the, uh, the structure over the years and uh, like working now cross-functional so um, having yeah several um, departments included into my team so which is um, yeah content marketing obviously and all disciplines so it means uh, SEO uh, social media marketing and um, like um, we are really linked to the commercial part as well um, doing this together uh, with uh, another colleague uh, um, um, which is Brigitte Kraus um, <laughs> yeah, and we are kind of co-leading this together. That's awesome and you know now it makes sense because I was like wow you're at a place for six years but it seems like you know it's very dynamic and you've had a lot of experiences to like try new things and you know move around and work with different people now i wanted to ask you too because i feel like a question and someone that i work you know for a multi uh, multilingual content agency i always have to ask like do you manage all your content production in-house are you working with a team of freelancers or how does that work in terms of production of the content yeah, we are producing everything in-house so mm -hmm. uh, with this um, team of editors content marketing managers um yeah all all the um uh, yeah uh, content uh, from the blog post uh, up to the um pushes so uh, mm -hmm. crm and uh, social media marketing yeah we do all um, and together with a, a great team of uh, marketers yeah, that's awesome. Now I need to ask too, because you know, a lot of people, I think from an outside perspective, right? You think of the doc region, you think of Germany, Austria, and Switzerland, it's like, oh, they all speak German, right? Quote unquote. <laughs> so I know there's a lot of different varieties and the cultures are very different amongst each other. So how do you make your content resonate in the different geographies within the region? And what's so unique about working in this region? And it's a region that you're from. Um that's true so like it's pretty unique and uh, that's why you really f need to uh, especially with a travel box you need to find a certain turn tone of voice right so mm -hmm. people are still different and they want that you uh, yeah still um accept this and you speak in a certain way with them so like it's uh, really basic things as well like switzerland they don't have a sz uh, which is this strange german letter uh, which is uh -huh. uh, for the double s as well and like yeah, just like for people, when we get this feedback, it's really important that you that you take this into consideration in your in your posts. And certain words are just different in their language, and we have a pretty close connection to our users. So mm -hmm. that's why we get a lot of feedback, and which is absolutely valuable, obviously. Um, and um, yeah, people really care about this if you if they are from from a region, and we have the possibility to really interact with them and to talk to them and give them yeah real recommendations. Finally, yeah. And for sure, market is pretty different. So like, for example, um, the purchasing power and demand generally, for example, Switzerland is a market where you have uh, higher uh, basket values generally. So people um, spend more money for the vacation as well. Mm -hmm. They're more into luxury travel. And for sure, we try to like, um, analyze these different personas, target groups, and um, yeah, having a, um yeah a view on the region even in germany so separating right. this and geo target our content uh, and we're working there with different captions as well to mm. really 
have a certain offer for uh, uh, yeah for for a type of person. So yeah. uh, even regions in Germany at all. That's awesome. It's not just like you know the differences in terms of like language, but also in the socioeconomic you know buying power that people have and stuff like that. It's really fascinating, um, and it's also really cool like the importance of localization, even in such small regions. I think that's one of the reasons why I love content marketing in Europe because it's, I love languages and I love learning from different backgrounds. And there's so much diversity in such a small place such as Europe. There's just so many different things you have to keep in mind. So it's definitely really cool to hear how you guys are using localization to better connect. You know, with the people that are using your platform. Now, you this really mm-hmm. creates a creates a strong relationship with users. With the, if you yeah. take small things into consideration, um, it's just not selling a product, right? Mm-hmm. You, we really work on on relationships. Finally, exactly. Mm-hmm. And something with like travel, you know, travel is all about the experience you have, and it's such a human experience. So I think you know, a platform like yours, it's like it's so important to have that human side to it and connect really with the users because that's what travel is all about. At the end of the day. Now, I wanted to um, touch on, because you talked about a bit about the pandemic, which we know, yeah, we mentioned before, really threw all our travel plans out the window. So I wanted to know, too, like, what did you guys do during the pandemic to, like, keep yourself afloat, I guess you could say? Um, And then how do you, like, in your opinion, how is the industry picking up again? Like, I don't, I think we're still in a pandemic, but I guess post-pandemic, I don't know what's going on. (laughs) We're in this weird phase now. I'm using this word many times as well, post-COVID or something like this, yeah. but it's kind of um, Is yeah, it over? difficult yeah. <laughs> to really say this right now. Incidences are uh, growing again everywhere mm. in Europe. And like it's, it seems like the, the same story is picking up again. So like, uh, let's not say post-COVID. So anyways, yeah. like it was like, for sure it was tough times working in, in the travel industry generally. So like... Uh, we had to adapt strategies and approaches pretty quickly you know? so, like, yeah. and changing this even like in really short time frames. So um, I was lucky that I'm working with a great team. So we, they were able to do this and like uh, um, really um, yeah, um, be part of this uh, transition as well. So we changed nearly everything, I would say. And um, what was important before was not important anymore. So mm-hmm. our content strategy went into really deeply into trust building so giving people all the information they really need to travel you never had mm-hmm. to fill out so many papers before when you were after the first lockdown when you were able to travel again there were so many question marks in people's head and we mm-hmm. needed to, to tr- transform being like kind of a news agency combined with a with a product yeah and giving being the helping hand for people to 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 travel again so mm-hmm. this was really like exciting times because like that was not our focus before. And we were into news. We were even picking up news from from the embassy and stuff quicker than some of the news channels. So wow. we were really uh, uh, like completely into this. And we had people just like doing and focusing on these, on this kind mm-hmm. of information. And for sure, what was really helpful, we because we have this strong relations with our user group, we got a lot of feedback by by uh, and analyzing this, and then having the option to always like focus on different things and have a discussion in the team. And yeah, that's what we created a really agile uh, pro- uh, process finally. So really, week after week, like from time to time, really changing completely our our uh, products so Mm -hmm. because for sure um, if the infection risk in some countries were way higher we couldn't recommend this anymore and this was Mm -hmm. kind of uh, yeah uh, uh, a change like in huge uh, in in really short time frames so um, and what was really important as well from our perspective was even more getting into personalization of our content Mm -hmm. people follow people and they follow travel experts in this case, and people will really give them this kind of rec- recommendations and where they have this, this feeling finally that, that they get all the information they need and that we're, we just recommend them something what we by ourselves would book. So yeah. as, as a good friend, I would say. Yeah, it seems like you have a very honest approach to your, your content and what you're recommending and the experiences that you want to share with your users as well. And like picking up, how is it picking up? Picking up again? Like I would say, travel is a basic need. It's mm-hmm. like uh, all of us uh, after the first lockdown, going back to restaurants and uh, having the first 
uh, beer in the beer garden again, back in sunshine, when this was possible again, everybody was, wow, uh, I need to do this, right? Right. And I would really say travel is the same thing. We really need this. We need to experience something new. As you said mm -hmm. before, it's all about the experience. Like finally we say, uh, sell like the hard thing, right? So I mm -hmm. travel, like going with an airplane, for example, is just like to get somewhere, but afterwards it's like, mm -hmm experiencing a new culture and yeah um yeah uh, really a basic need yeah say. definitely and yeah. and and after this picking up again uh, i would say we as holiday pirates are uh, are, uh, are there to inspire people to to feel safe about traveling again mm -hmm. yeah and it's really cool that you guys were like on the forefront of you know all these the news right when it came to traveling and the restrictions because honestly that's the most stressful part i think you know i think traveling in itself it's kind of not it doesn't have to be stressful and i think the more you do it it's not but now you have this added level of like all these restrictions even like I feel like in Portugal, for example, where I'm living like every two weeks, it changes. So it's like, I don't even know, like, you know, people are asking me, do I have to get a test to go back? And I don't, <laughs> I don't think I do now, but it just changes all the time. So it's so hard to stay on top of it. So it's so nice that you guys are doing that um, and helping, you know, this travel community and bringing awareness on the different restrictions. Now, I wanted to ask you too, like, what's a typical day like for you now at, at work? I would say I'm a really lucky person. I don't have that typical day mm -hmm. my days are really kind of different so for sure i have kind of a daily routine i would say so as i said like uh being into different topics and uh, yeah um, for example this news topic for sure i uh, need to check uh, sales performance and uh, all the data i have uh, on a on a daily basis we are data right. driven company as well so all our product decisions need to be based on on something right so um, we have different kpis and that's something our day starts like uh, having a look on what's going on in tourism in the travel mm -hmm. industry and then like yeah uh, adapting this like to the to to the daily performance which we have and afterwards yeah working working a lot uh, with the team i see myself uh, yeah as um supportive leadership uh, style so um from my perspective it's really really important to be there for people to to discuss topics with them and um generally um yeah it's 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 a lot about trust and um developing ideas together uh, content marketing is like yeah you need to have an approach you to always inventing something new from my perspective that's so important about marketing generally and to surprise people to surprise the audience and that's mm -hmm. why we really need to just dis discuss a lot i have a lot of one-on-ones with my team members and um, yeah we have stand-ups and um that's that's a really important uh, part of my job to to, sure. to make them feeling comfortable and uh, being able to perform that's awesome. And it's so true. I feel like we talk about this a lot on this show. It's just how important it is to like constantly learn and to challenge ourselves because everything is changing so much. So it's so important to, you know, be creative, be innovative, but also like keep up with the trends because especially now with marketing and use doing content marketing on like social media channels, it's such, everything's changing all the time. So I think it's such an important skill, right, to have as a marketer um, to be, you know, constantly learning and constantly learning from not just from, you know, books and all the stuff that we have uh, information we have online and but also just from your your co your team members and it seems like you really invest your time um in the one-on-ones with your team members to you know brainstorm and, and keep yourself creative and i think creating this environment is one of the most important tasks in modern leadership mm -hmm. because For people sure. if you give them the space to to perform and the trust and the responsibility um people absolutely going to do this, at least if you have the right people. And I definitely have the right people in my team. So For sure. that's the interpretation of yeah. leadership from my and perspective. I just love that approach. You know, I think it's so important to give people the space and the ability to know, propose their ideas. And you know, maybe they're not right, but still you're giving them the space to do so. And you can maybe take something from, you know, a proposal they have and make it work and kind of, you know, bring all these different minds together. And as well, having an environment where it's possible to to try things out, being out of the box and doing mistakes as well. 
really, yeah, really important. Getting out of your comfort zone. I think it's so important. Anyways, analyzing them afterwards and try to avoid them the next time. That's exactly. really kind of an important thing as well, right? And that's something that you see with travel, what you guys do. Like we go on trips and stuff and yeah, we might do things wrong. You might have some negative experiences, but that's part of the journey is putting yourself out there and going into a new environment and kind of learning from that environment as well. So it's really cool how those so two true. things tie together. Um, now you have plenty of experience at Holiday Pirates, you know, with content. So I want to know if you have an example of a campaign or a piece of content that's really worked well for you. Yeah, we something we just launched. So mm -hmm. we recognized that the demand of this personalization was heavily increasing again after or with Corona after Corona mm -hmm. again. I'm doing this all the time. So <laughs> that, like uh, uh, with Corona, let's say then like. As I said before, people follow people. Yeah, we, you want to have a person behind who gives you this kind of recommendation. That's why we launched uh, Pirates on Tour now. Uh, means mm. uh, people like are doing certain campaigns. Like lately, we did Mauritius, for example. They just mm. opened their borders again, and uh, two of my colleagues uh, just went there with a wow. with a new airline. And like, yeah, we promoted this like content on our blog and afterwards, like mainly on Instagram. And uh, yeah, we shared the whole experience with our users and uh, this um, worked out pretty good. We did yeah. this in the past um, before. Anyways, like it picked really up and uh, we have many, many campaigns now with uh, tourism boards as well um, to, to promote this in this, in this uh, yeah, new way. And yeah. Uh, it's, um, yeah, we get really good feedback by our users and um, giving them yeah, a special tip like while traveling and yeah, feeling as well the product mm -hmm. and uh, showing face. And, yeah, that's uh, so cool. This is this is really important. I think. Like, and, sounds like a dream job <laughs> to be able to fly these places and write about it and learn more about that and have those experiences. It sounds really really cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it is. It is like um, and the first of you know, the soon like uh, there will be a, some more like long distance mm -hmm. where still is a lot of insecurity. Now the weather is getting worse in uh, Central Europe means people want to get out and um, yeah, as we have said before, we want to be the helping hand to get people back in the world many good news coming up like countries opening again mm -hmm. and anyways still a lot of question marks for everybody who wants to travel Good and sure. so we do the first step and we do it before uh, and showing people that it's possible that's again. awesome now i have to ask too because we're talking about you know successful campaigns you've done and like what you your approach at holiday pirates is to content what do you think some companies get wrong when it comes to content marketing in the travel industry I think it's not really black and white. So okay. uh, uh, it's about mainly about trying new things, right? So I wouldn't really point something out uh, which is which is generally wrong. Anyways, mm -hmm. anyway, I would say like stories uh, went always more important, right? Mm -hmm. So five years ago, it was still like way more direct sales. Yeah, I could promote something somewhere and. The story was already important, but it was still a different different thing. Right mm -hmm. now, like I need even to co combine the whole thing, right? It's not right. about one certain product. The whole thing must be a round story. Mm -hmm. And that's something like what really changed. And um, having retention finally on, on your on your homepage in your in your app, like it's really about having a purpose as well. And like, yeah, solving this problem, but as well telling people, uh, yeah, uh, what's behind finally and why you are doing this and having, mm. yeah, kind of, uh, uh, yeah, a different uh, marketing approach by this. Like, not direct sales in your face and just buy it. People want to have more. Exactly. And they want a full experience as well, yep. just like that they do with their travels. But it's also like being honest and transparent, which I think you guys seem to do that you know you're sending your own people to do these trips and report on them and it's all a first-hand experience so i think that people really appreciate that and they're just not you know they're using your tool obviously but then they're also getting this added value from the content that you're sharing which is great um, and i need to feel this experience yeah like, yeah i need to feel the experience and it's way easier to 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 finally decide as well mm -hmm. so that it's like an interesting product for me as well to 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 be the source of inspiration and then having 
a product which which really fits your needs and yeah. uh, travel is such an cool. important time holidays is such an important time you don't want to make a mistake here right exactly and it's such an important like at the same time you know people are you're spending money traveling costs money <laughs> so it's good to like you know feel assured like if they feel inspired to do a trip it makes the decision for them much easier because they're like oh yeah i feel good about this and i want to book it let's go so it's cool that you guys are inspiring in that way as well um, now, I want to also ask you, because you have plenty of experience and you work with marketers, what are some skills you think that are super important for marketers to have nowadays? Listening. Mm -hmm. So listen to your audience. Really have a look what's what they care for, what's they, what's they, what are the problems, what is a critique as well. So mm -hmm. if you don't listen to your audience, it's going to be really difficult these days. Uh, openness. Openness is really important from my perspective. So mm -hmm. try something new, really, as like have a look on new channels, have a look on uh, channels, have a look on development, or like what's really going on in your market finally, mm -hmm. and in your uh, yeah, you need to care about uh, yeah all the topics finally. For us, it's not about just about travel. I have a look on all lifestyle, even like yeah, uh, more disciplines, like because it's it doesn't need to be your own branch to mm. to to have inspiring good ideas right mm. and uh, to adapt this um as well agility i would say like you need to adapt so quickly trends are changing heavily in like mm. times of tiktok and uh, reels and really <laughs> fast development generally and just snacking in informations everywhere um yeah and yeah really this creativity and innovation so i said out of the box before and i really really like this like the approach idea. of i want to start my day with inventing something new like which people didn't see before and if i have this need kind of it's not working every day you can you, uh, i think you have better days and yeah. you're worse obviously but that should be your approach i would say and it's really important as a marketer and uh, i really believe like in cross-functional teams so yeah. Having more than one process in one hand can be really motivating. Can be like you have a look in different sectors as well of a company. I, I really believe that that this can be heavily yeah, a, a skill which is really important for the future generally. Yeah. Um, being a marketer is being a all around talent. I would say kind of. Exactly, and I feel like that's important too to know what other people do at your your company as well, and learn from them, and you kind of get more invested that way by just understanding how the whole thing works and how the whole operation goes. Um, and you also mentioned a lot too, like this idea of oh, you want to say something? I don't know if I yeah, I well. forgot <laughs> data. I forgot data. data. Oh yeah. It's, uh, finally, it's uh, as well like you need data, like yeah. uh, that's just the development, right? So mm -hmm. um, data driven decisions. So are super um, important just to know how the company's going for sure and have a better understanding of if things are working or are they not working and what can we do to change them but i was just going to say too like you mentioned a lot this idea of you know creative risk like thinking outside the box and being willing to do that and i think you know when people also start our listeners are you know people from all different backgrounds and different levels of you know experience and i think a lot of people when they start you know their careers in marketing it is a risk you know you're trying something new um and something that you did you kind of followed your passion and said i want to do this and here i go um so i wanted to know a bit more in your opinion what advice would you give to somebody just starting out now or what advice would you tell yourself if you could go back in time <laughs> Yeah, I, I can just say follow your passion, right? So, um, have a look and really uh, what motiv motivates you. Mm -hmm. um, and then get things done, like just do it, right? So like mm -hmm. if you if you want to be successful in something, you yeah, you from time to time you need to make tough decisions as well. Mm -hmm. we, we, and maybe not even like generally like the right way for um, ma many persons around you or in the society. Mm -hmm. But if it's really like your passion, you will be yeah successful in it. I really like I believe in this. Like yeah. and I think that's really really important. It is important. Now, I wanted to ask you, too, because from the research that I've done, um, Holiday Pirates adopted a remote first policy last year, but now you've moved your headquarters to a co-working space. So how have you found the transition um, to a co-working space and how are you finding the hybrid work model? We still have the flexibility in working like fully remote as well. Oh, so cool. like it's kind of uh, the campfire, I would say now, like um, 
getting together from time to time and having a, uh, a place where you have the possibility in doing to this. Do that. Like, mm. And um, what is really cool about this hybrid model and working in a co-working space is like you get to know so many other people and mm. uh, other companies and different faces. Um, you need to get used to it at the beginning, I would really say as well. So because it's kind of overwhelming after like yeah. uh, many different lockdowns already in Germany. Yeah. And what it's it, it's 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 really interesting to yeah. to, to to meet people and who are working in completely different sectors as well uh, at the coffee machine and to have a quick chat with them. So it's and it's really possible in a co-working space. It I is. Have to, have to point out. So and that's cool. If you are like have the openness which I said before, then you can make a lot of it. And having like yeah the possibilities to create this moments where you see the colleagues again, mm -hmm. like. That's really, that's really, that's really cool. It's spontaneous really cool. ideas. And um, yeah, that's why I, really I would like, say the campfire. campfire. Yeah, it is that concept of the campfire. And like, I really liked, I always liked working from home. And it's something that I have like, I've sworn not really to go back to the conventional office, but it's something that, you know, when I moved to Lisbon, that was a big part of it was that the co-working environment there is super important. And it's like really, you know, a lot of people are going there to work. So I thought it would be really cool to, a cool way to meet other people and, um, and the idea of the campfire too is something that we're doing in our own, like we're all not based in Madrid anymore, but we're still trying to go back there and, you know, go to a co-working and kind of have like, you know, quarterly times that we can go and meet each other. So it's really cool. And I think the flexibility really makes, you know, employees happier as well. Okay. Now, I wanted to know too about you personally. I always ask people like, do you have any like daily habits that you attribute to your success that you could share with us? You know, a lot of people will say, like to-do list or I do yoga in the morning and I'm always fascinated to hear like what people do. So what do you do on a daily basis that helps you? I can start with things I shouldn't do. That's my <laughs> first liter, liter of coffee. I'm definitely <laughs> drinking too much of this. Anyways, like I kind of need to start my, uh, my day with uh, a lot of coffee, I would say. Um, afterwards, like, um, yeah, my personal kind of meditation is like mm. stand-up pedaling. Stand up paddling on the spray, like for me, that's my, and at least if uh, the weather is nice in Berlin, uh, mm -hmm. we have some good ones as well. Then I really try to do this really frequent, frequently. And that's a um, pretty uh, good part of uh, uh, hybrid and uh, remote working generally mm -hmm. is that right at lunch break from time to time, if I don't have any uh, meeting at this time, then for sure I have the option to make a small round on, on Spree on the river and yeah. have like a moment like Disconnect. which is kind of inspiring again and which is uh, yeah, a possibility to con disconnect in between. And uh, this is really, really, really important from my perspective as well and really helps me. Uh, and like during pandemic as well, I'm structuring my day in mm -hmm. way smaller pieces yeah before like i really try to have like 20 30 minutes frame while i'm working or I, even in my personal life to 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 have like okay this is now i'm 30 minutes doing like language class bubble or something like this so mm -hmm. and um uh, kind of structuring my day in a different way i would say that's awesome you know it's important especially when it was locked down it was important to make sure we're like taking it piece by piece um but i do think another thing that you pointed out is just like being able to take a, a break you know, during the day, going out to do exercise or even just go for a walk or to, I don't know, disconnect for a bit. It's so important. I think it's something that we always, a habit that we should incorporate, you know, moving forward is that we have to make sure we give ourselves breaks because <laughs> mental and health is important. Yeah, and motivate your team of mm -hmm. doing that as well. Like where from time to time in our team chat, like I'm just writing like, hey, it's in the winter, like during lockdowns or whatever, like it's so sunny right now just get out right yeah, like go uh, outside <laughs> uh, uh, it's it's, so it's the best thing you can do right now have this rest and enjoy the sun for uh, a couple of minutes an hour or something have your lunch break so in, yeah. right now it's sunny it will be not in one day <laughs> yeah. not the day after so go for it it's definitely important in central europe as you said too, to make sure you take advantage of the sun when it's yeah. there um you're in lisbon right now way better i know that's one of the sunniest cities in the world in europe at least so i can't complain <laughs> um <laughs> now i wanted to ask you too like do you have a professional role model or a source of inspiration which motivates you 
in this case, I go for the source of inspiration for sure. My source of inspiration definitely is travel. Really? So mm. yeah, like in in all matters, I would say, like getting something, getting to do something new, like um, be mm. like have this openness for new culture, food, meeting the people, like. So many times I came back from whatever journey which was impactful for me, seemed something completely different. And I think after that, I had like most interesting ideas and mm. you know, most interesting yeah, changes in mindset. Like, yeah, it's so and, true. And meeting other people and having them, you know, tell their stories to you and you learn from them. I think that's like one reason why I love to travel. One reason why I love to learn languages is because of that like bridge you make with other people from different parts of the world. I think it's really something that's beautiful. And I wanted to ask you too, this before the pandemic, how often did you travel? Because I feel like a lot of people who work in it, we want to know like people in the travel industry, do they travel all the time? Or <laughs> like, just want to know a bit more about that. Uh, yeah, can I really say this in times of uh, um, sustainability and uh, climate change? Uh, I would say I had some crazy times. So I bet. Uh, which I wouldn't do anymore. Like I had like as well, especially we had some, outstanding travel offers obviously so i did uh yeah crazy things like having uh, a few days in japan tokyo um but just like for a couple of days right because the offer was just that nice and we had this flexibility already in the company so mm. it was just like kind of an addiction i would say yeah. uh, as i said passion before right now i i changed this behavior i saw a lot i would say in uh, in the last couple of years so um, i think i visited way more than 50 countries already wow. and um, saw a lot and many many countries uh, more than one time and um, i think i got way more into slow travel so yeah. i i really like to to enjoy things a bit more Take your time yeah detailed taking my time like mm -hmm. and then having the full experience that's like uh, um, uh, really cool. And I love Europe as well. I don't have to go that far. Mm -hmm. um, a lot to see. Anyways, I'm planning to go to, to Thailand uh, soon uh, to awesome. do some remote work as well. So um, that's great. Why not? And it's good that I do yeah. think one thing the pandemic did teach us was like we had the opportunity to slow down, but also like what you said with like climate change and all these things, like we kind of took a, it's time to reflect. And I think a lot of people will change their mindsets when it comes to travel. I did want to ask you too, though, what's your, do you have like a go-to place to visit? What's your favorite place to travel to? It's a hard question for someone that's been to 50 countries, but <laughs> to ask. Uh, I would say, like what was really impactful for me then again, like I would definitely say Vietnam. Uh, mm -hmm. I stayed longer in Vietnam. I worked for a, a political foundation there. I did mm -hmm. an internship there, like for a project while studying um, um, rule of law. And like I had so many great impressions there. I met so many interesting people and like, I love Southeast Asia generally. It's so interesting. Uh, countries are so different and vietnam was great food great people and just so different to live there several months it was mm. i lived in hanoi it was just a great opportunity so i would awesome. always uh, go there again and it's just amazing so yeah i haven't been so i'm gonna add it to my list it was already on my list so many places are on my list <laughs> um <laughs> That's cool. ask too, like do you have any like apps or tools platforms or books that you would recommend um, for people interested in marketing yeah, I would say like uh, what what my own behavior like lately a, a bigger change is uh, the development of TikTok honestly. So like okay, like I know uh, many people might say right now okay that's still like uh, um, like uh, uh, crazy things, the dance or whatever. But I really think during pan pandemic it changed a lot. So mm -hmm. you get a lot of valuable information, like uh, even for marketers, like um, if you follow um some of the influencers they're like they are into uh, yeah interesting topics and you get this information snack wise even like being in the metro or something like um it's kind of interesting that there are new tools or things like this so i can recommend this the, the algorithm mm. is really really good from my perspective as well so uh, like um you get um valuable information there as well so it's it's cool and um i would really say what 
is uh, recommend, uh, recommendable generally like is uh, um, all marketing uh, podcasts. I'm listening a lot mm. to uh, to podcasts like browsing around, just having a look, many German ones as well. Mm. Um, anyways, like uh, I think that's something you can you can do a part as well and that makes my like yeah makes it kind of productive as well from my perspective. Awesome. Um, and now you're gonna be um on a podcast you can listen to yourself. Now <laughs> that's what's pretty funny. <laughs> How the <laughs> tables turn, right? <laughs> true, um, true, true. So that's why yeah. I'm here. That's why I like here. podcasts. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Well thank you again for coming. And we've come to the end of our interview unfortunately. I feel like we could dive into many more topics it was very interesting and fascinating to learn more about what you do and your experience and your love for travel which is something that we both have in common um but do you have any final takeaways or a piece of parting advice you'd like to give our audience i would say seeing these interesting times like and i'm talking about the pandemic as well so it was mm -hmm. challenging somehow but I always pointed out as well, it's interesting times because there's so much change going on mm -hmm. and take something out of it as well for your, for your business, mm -hmm. like, and really try to, to make this in a, for you, for your team, for your company in a sustainable way. Right. Yeah. Really, really challenge, challenge things. Yeah. Try new things and, um, really stay with some of these things yeah. as well. Don't fall, don't fall back in old habits yeah. and self-reflection as well about these kind of things it's really mm -hmm. important for my and it's like rather than right seeing now. things as a challenge seeing them as an opportunity to grow an opportunity to try new things so that's really important to have because sometimes you know these things are hard so maybe some people might shut down from that rather than you know and stick with their old habits rather than changing so it's really good advice now we got in touch with you on linkedin so you're, you're active on linkedin but i just want to ask um, for our audience, if anyone wanted to get in touch with you and ask you more questions or people who are interested in working in the travel industry, where could they reach out to you? Now it's getting boring. So I would say it was LinkedIn, honestly. LinkedIn, I think yeah. uh, LinkedIn is a really good uh, way to approach people finally and to get to know new people for podcasts, for example. Yeah. So, like, uh, it worked for I us. I think uh, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Or like, okay, email address like uh, uh, C point space. My uh, my um, surname at uh, holidaypilots uh, dot de. So uh -huh. if you are looking for <laughs> corporations or something or any questions, like feel free for sure. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing that with us, um, and thank you again, Carlo, for joining us today on the content mix. Um, and I also want to thank everyone for listening in. For more perspectives on the content marketing industry in Europe check out veracontent.com slash mix and keep tuning to the podcast for more interviews with content experts. We'll see you next time. Thank you again, Carlo. A pleasure.